Well, guess what? We've got another case, or we've got another defendant representing himself, this one in Vegas. Our great affiliate KTNV has the story for us tonight. You understand that it's almost always more wise to be represented by counsel. Especially when you're being charged with first degree murder and facing life without the possibility of parole. Yes, sir. Right? A sharp exchange between Judge Michelle Levitt and murder defendant Robert Tellis. Judge Levitt trying to impress upon Tellis that criminal law is complicated and requires years of training. And you understand you don't have that. I mean, you have legal training, but you don't have the legal training. I mean, nowhere near what Mr. Sheets has or Mr. Hanner from the state. I appreciate the concern, Your Honor. Lawyers cannot... Uh, simply withdraw from their clients whenever you know they want to. But according to Boyd Law School associate professor Benjamin Edwards, attorneys need a very good reason to walk away from a client. They include a conflict of interest, not getting paid, ethics like being asked to lie on behalf of a client in court, or in the Tellus case. But the client fires the attorney. Uh, the attorney may seek to withdraw. Ultimately, if the court, if the attorney has entered an appearance in court. It's still going to be up to the judge whether or not to allow the attorney to withdraw. He gets no special treatment. DA Steve Wilson says Tellus will have to play by the rules of the court just like any other attorney, but this won't give prosecutors an advantage. To the contrary, he says it'll make the trial more difficult. We want the record to be clear of error, and lawyers know the rules. Even though Mr. Tellus is a lawyer, he's not a criminal lawyer. He doesn't understand everything that a, an experienced criminal defense lawyer knows. So my prosecutors now have to be a little extra careful to make sure he doesn't break the rules and create error. He went to law school, okay? But just going to law school doesn't really prepare you to be a trial attorney, especially in a murder case. But that's what Robert Tellis is doing. He's a politician. He's used to speaking to people, trying to convince them of things like voting for him. I guess we'll be doing the same thing in the court, you know, vote not guilty for me, right? Something like that. Anyway, let's take a look at this. Yes, he's a lawyer, but not a trial lawyer, not a criminal defense lawyer, representing himself uh, in front of the judge. Your motion to compel, and I think you already know how I feel about it. I think your subpoenas were inappropriate. If they're inappropriate, you can't really get an order telling them to comply. Your Honor, if I may, uh, sure. I'd like to request that uh, I get a reply, I submit a continuance, that the response uh, was served um, two days ago was filed, uh, so I'd like a little bit of time to go ahead and file a response to that. A response to what? The, to Metro's response to my motion to compel. Okay, well, the, the subpoenas were inappropriate, so I'm not sure any response it's going to help. I can tell you how you can get the information if you want the information, but it's not going to be the way you did it because those subpoenas are inappropriate. Yeah, um, is that it's denied then? Is what denied? My request for subpoenas. Yeah, I, there's, I don't, I mean, there's nothing. The subpoenas are inappropriate. They're going to be quashed. And I mean, I can tell you how you can seek that information. I mean, you can issue a subpoena after getting a court order. And Your Honor, after, yeah, at the last hearing, I did mention it, and of course, I, I would like to go ahead and go into my argument, and I'm going to go ahead and About. ask that the court allow me to make a full record. Okay, go ahead. Um, and so, just, you know, first of all, sure. responding to what, what Your Honor has been saying, in my motion to compel, I very clearly stated that I was actually remaking my request as a motion to compel discovery, not as a motion to, you know, um, have subpoenas enforced. Okay. So the requests were in the body of the motion. It was, we are not talking about trying to enforce subpoenas here. As Your Honor had mentioned at the last hearing, when, you know, as far as Your Honor is concerned, I am to ask Your Honor to order the, that documents be compelled. Mm -hmm. And that is what I did in the motion. But I, I don't know if, you know, again, Your Honor read it because you still say that it wasn't appropriate. But it was in the motion. Maybe he'd do better if you put a tie on. I don't know. Let's bring back in our think tank, Daryl Cohen, Molly Palmer, Josh Schiffer. 
Uh, Molly, sometimes like a little bit of knowledge is dangerous, right? Oh yeah, and I mean a lot of knowledge is even more dangerous. I Let me just say that we are all saying, oh, he's not a criminal defense lawyer. <laughs> As if a criminal defense lawyer would represent themselves. Yeah, no, first if I'm going down for murder, I'm calling Josh. Like I'm not gonna <laughs> represent myself as a criminal defense lawyer. Let's make that absolutely clear. He, he's trying to schmooze and he's going to lose. And actually, Molly, he is now a criminal defense lawyer since he's representing himself. His last name, though spelled a little bit differently, is very similar to a wonderful museum in North Georgia called Tellus. Well, he's telling us what we don't need to know, but we do know. So what's the difference between a criminal and a criminal defense lawyer? In his case, none. Well. <laughs> there, uh, perspective, objectiveness. No, uh, it, it's an absolute travesty that this guy would have the hubris to think that he's going to be in any way effective. The first thing, like Molly's talking about, that any criminal defense attorney would do is tell you, you got to get away from being your own advocate. Mm -hmm. Who who do you think's going to have a better shot here? Or who do you think's a better advocate? Ronnie O'Neill that we saw on the way in? I know he was convicted, but... You know, he's very passionate in the courtroom. At least Ronnie O'Neill has a pretty reasonable competency argument because we all watched his performance. Right. This lawyer's passed the bar, has shown how sophisticated they are. Well spoken, uh, well mannered, absolutely. Ronnie well groomed. Ronnie O'Hare had great <laughs> hair. Uh, well, look, he needs to learn, as my cohorts have said, you cannot represent yourself. The first thing but we learned in law school Doesn't he know is, the case better than anyone? He knows things that a lawyer wouldn't know about what happened. But he doesn't know how to KYD BMS, which is keep his damn big mouth shut. That's the problem, or one of them. Doesn't it, isn't there a potential advantage, though, that as a criminal defendant representing yourself, you can sort of testify without testifying, without taking the stand? If you're really smart about it. He resembles that remark, but he's not that smart. Right? The way you question the witnesses, you can sort of get your testimony in front of the jury without being cross-examined. No, I think that it is incredibly dangerous to put a defendant on the stand. You know that as a criminal defense lawyer. And then to be the one doing the questioning, I think, is all the more dangerous. It makes anything that is potentially a landmine in a criminal trial an absolute terrible situation. And, and, and this isn't my passing the school bus ticket in city court. This is a murder case. Right. Like, he is going to be absolutely held to account just like any other educated member of the bar. Does it humanize and him in front of the jury because they get to see and hear him oh, every yeah, day? Oh, yeah, they humanize, they demonize himself. So when he is convicted, you know who he can sue for ineffective assistance of counsel? Himself. Yeah. Is that, so how tough will this be for the judge to, you know, she's trying to help him to a certain extent. The judge has to do that, right? A, a little bit? Judge is going to protect the integrity of the process so that it can withstand some sort of appeal from a legitimate appellate lawyer that knows what they're doing. This guy's gonna walk in there bull in a china shop, screw up everything. The judge is gonna work really hard to keep her hands around it and get a result that can withstand the integrity of a real attack. All right, let's, let's, we'll continue to track that one. By the way, we've got a trial date, November 6th. May 3rd, we've got a status hearing uh, for Robert Tellis, charged with murdering an investigative journalist who was uncovering a sex scandal.